Were you like okay. proud of him or were you pissed? No, I was really proud. Like once I woke up, I was really proud. Oh. <laughs> once, <laughs> once you woke wake up, up in the knocked, hospital, he knocked you yes. out? He dropped me. I was, yes. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Yet another day. You ever think we'll get bored of this shit? Uh, nope. No. I don't think so. I never. I really like this podcast, and I hope you do too, because it's impulsive. The number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, subscribing. If you're not subscribed, I'll fucking kill you. You said that last time. One, two. Remember what we're working on? Being less abrasive. Three. One of the reasons I'm really liking this I'm podcast so lately is I I'm feel so like sorry. we're collaborating more and being nicer to each other. I True. still have to work on that. Bro, this boxing is just, I, it makes me so aggressive. I keep screaming at our yeah. really no reason. Now you're just screaming the same thing you said on the last no, podcast. No, like, no, scream something no, original. no, 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 no. Last time I said, I will, I will end you. Oh, and this time I said, I'll kill I'll, you. I'll, I'll, end, I'll kill you. It's very creative. Oh, it's very creative. Well, I'm actually quite upset because I learned, I learned something. I'm, I'm perturbed, perturbed because I learned something from Mike's Instagram story yesterday. Okay. Um, Mike, I'm going to let you take it away. This is actually from an Instagram story today, but I think Spencer's speaking in the more formative past present tense, which is a vegan thing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we found out today. I've actually known this, but I never wanted to address it or tell anyone. But Logan doesn't like fucking tacos. I don't uh. know what I'm saying. Like... What's wrong with a you, A classic bro? American... What's wrong with you? Latin hybrid that has, sorry, let's just give the, the props more to the Latin side, but Americans have really loved them always. How do you not fucking like tacos? And what does that say about hey, you being a sociopath? Comment down That's below. terrible. I can't be the only one. I can't, bro. Just, it, yo, is your Chef Katie listening? She doesn't watch these, right? Chef, no. Katie, Chef Katie does not make good tacos. I'm just going to tell you. Like, are you? I'm so sorry. Chef Katie, I love you. Yo, it's it's because the, the tortillas are gluten-free because I'm gluten-free, but like, bro, I can't. Fuck, she's gonna kill me. Yeah, but like she's even even me. today when we talked about this party, she's gonna quit. Even what? today when we talked about this party that we're doing Sunday, do you want to? Well, it's Hawaiian themed, and Mike's like, "Yo, did we make the right call? Maybe it should have been Mexican themed." And we all just kind of scoffed at him. He's like, "Yeah, but tacos," and I'm like, "Bro, I don't even like I don't even like tacos." I mean, think about it, dude. What if we had a mariachi? No, band I'm a fuck, bro. I'm a white dude from Ohio, like like yeah. yin and yang. It, it just, just doesn't matter. Doesn't though. Tacos have sense. infiltrated Universal. Canada at this point. Oh, oh, shit. They're into green. Oh. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh Hold my god. On. So here the we laptop go. We got a chocolate now, milk now spill. Now roll this. Roll this, Spencer. Imagine this for a second. Man who doesn't like tacos <laughs> spills shit all over the impulsive podcast. Like, Ruins his MacBook. Is this guy? And why are we friends with him? I don't know, dude. It's it's a I'll warning you, sign I'll tell you to me. I'll it's tell a you, warning you, sign. You know who you. else doesn't like tacos? Hitler. And Another person I found didn't out like today, him, I went on Wikipedia, most famous taco dislikers, Joseph Stalin, number three, Mao Zedong. <laughs> Massive taco disliker, had never liked tacos. Yeah, they bro. ran campaigns on the civilization promoting anti-tacos. Speaking of anti-tacos, yeah, we get it. Please comment below if you like tacos. Uh, I spilled my coffee. I'm a disaster. Wait, can I please get the nap? Oh, okay, great. Yo, uh, we, we've been watching Chernobyl. If you watch the last podcast, oh. podcast, which is great, we talked about it a little bit. And Spencer asked a good question yesterday: <clears throat> If that, if we lived in Chernobyl or pa 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 whatever the whatever the city was, Prepia, Pratika, Priyanka Chopra, if we lived there, um, <laughs> and and it was the radiation happened, what what would we do as boys? Like now, if we right now were placed there, yeah. And my answer was. Personally, I would go into the radiation into the and core. attempt to go grow a third arm out of my chest so it can just jerk me off in case of emergency. <laughs> I would I would actually bring a, a constantly ready to just mm. I, I would go in there carrying Logan and hope that he mutates into someone that likes tacos <laughs> so I could actually become friends with him again. Yeah. Because at this point I've lost all fucking hope. Right. On the note of Chernobyl, so what a show. Episode two had a massive cliffhanger. We are just yeah. we're, we're incre it's incredible. It's incredible. Hey, Mike. What do we got? Big things have been happening for you, man. <clears throat> oh. You got a DM. You got a DM from a pretty big account, pretty notable oh, yesterday. No. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it because he knows it's over. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Mike's reaching the end of his life. I'll oh, tell you no. why. It's just an omen. Because what if I really do need to work with... All right, fuck it. Let's let's keep it generic, okay? We won't keep say, it PG. We won't call no, the we're no, going stop, there. Stop, stop, Mike stop, stop. got a DM from Coco Loco Bright White Smile. All right. When, when Mavericks die, when they're done working here in the household, the first ad they do is your Coco Loco bright white smile. And then the next, laser hair removal. By the way, the products don't fucking work. Oh. Don't and, work. and just so, you, You're gonna get that quick rack. Just so you know, it was, that was not the brand. I'm happy you used that one. That said, 
I am scared now because it was almost like seeing Samara from the ring where you see, or that video, when you see the video, you're dead. Like you dude. got seven days. Like I saw this, this DM come in with the like, Hey, we'd bad. love you to wear our whitening strips on your Instagram story. And I was like, I'm fired in the next fucking seven days. This shit's over, dude. I'm going to be doing whitening ads on Instagram stories for, for a living. Everyone, dude. everyone that has passed through this camp about a month or two after they're done here ends up doing the Coco Loco. Bright white smile. Broke as fuck. Flower count dropping, but damn, they have white teeth. <clears throat> sort of. Not even true, though. Like I said, the products don't work, dude. I saw a laser hair removal. I knew I was done. You want to bring a guest on? What do you think? Yeah, of course, oh, bro. Okay. Yo. <clears throat> I'm fucking excited for this one. This is awesome. She is hands down the most beautiful person in the UFC right ahead of Brock Lesnar. She's got eight wins. <laughs> a Dancing with the Stars finalist was just featured in Sports Illustrated. Illustrated Swimsuit Edition 2019. She's a best-selling author. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Paige Van Zandt. Wow. I'm sweating. Oh, my God. I'm hey. sweating. Paige, uh, I, I can't believe you're here. I'm really sad Brock Lesnar beats me in the No, no, no. Department. You're, you're just ahead above him. him. Oh, yeah, he's okay. right behind you. He's just, just a fucking hunk, if I'm being honest. Brock, hey. Wow, I'm excited, Paige. Me too. Thanks. This is a this is a fun one. I it really is. We kind of just talk about whatever. And if you ever want to shut me or Mike down or beat our ass, feel free to do so. That's actually fair. Seems like a really fun thing. To do. <laughs> yeah. No. I've, yeah. Well, look, I have I have a highlight tape of you here, just oh, pretty much awesome. ending everyone's life. Um, of course, no music because of copyright. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, just kicking people in the yeah, face, let's do the sound oh, effects. then punching them in the face <laughs> repeatedly, <laughs> and then uh, now the screen's black. And you just you uh, broke the camera. The over. Look, it the point fun. is, the point is, you kick ass, Paige. Yep. But you're also beautiful. Thank you. What a what an odd combination. <laughs> is it? I I mean, historically, yeah. How many pretty girls that you like? How many Insta models like, right? that come over are beating your ass? Or beating ass in general. Unless, like, I want them to. It's like a, like well, a sexual thing. Man. Okay. <laughs> but not very many. Not very many. <laughs> no, I feel you. Oh, this, oh. Was, this was Dancing oh, with the Stars? Hey, you guys got <laughs> wow. all the good stuff. Thank oh, you. Wow. Yeah. wow. Look at that pixelization. Hey. Oh, Since when does YouTube have pixels, by the way? A little Austin sure. Powers action. That was me, too. What's awesome. Today's just a horrible What's day. What's going I think it's because I spilled the coffee. Oh, I'm sweating, bro. Yeah, the coffee just I'm ended your laptop. I'm sweating, bro. Dude, dude. God, uh, I'm hot, dude. I'm nervous. Stress you guys out a little bit. See, well, it's just because, like, you, you, at any moment, you could knock me out, dude. Is this, I think, I've seen your boxing, though. Yeah, you right, know what dude. you're doing. You're goddamn right I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, anyway. what did you think about Logan getting into fighting? I mean, like, do, you, was, do you even know about it? You're like kind of like way up, like a list. Man. No, I've heard you did you boxed somebody. Yeah. It went great. Not really though. You were a, a high school state wrestling yeah, champ. Yeah, I, I know. All right, that. who briefed you? Which one of these guys <laughs> briefed you? <laughs> All right, his boyfriend? name no, is Logan. No, Paul. Husband, husband. Yeah? yeah, my husband was a national champ. Uh -huh. So, but yours <laughs> is cool nice. too. No, no, this dude walks in. This dude walks in. It's got cauliflower here. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what type of guy this is. Wait, so, okay. When did y'all meet? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like two years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, we're so new. You, we so got married like got, right away. You got married quick. Yeah. You ever worry it's too quick? No. Really? Oh gosh, I tried to make him <laughs> like, I tried to, well, he might, I don't know. Well, he, do you fight? Or are you just a wrestler? Yeah. So he's a fighter too. He fights for Bellator. Mm -hmm. Oh, you fight for Bellator? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. What does a fight look like between you two? <laughs> like just yeah. out of curiosity. Like when you, like when you argue, what happens? Yeah. It gets pretty violent. Re no, no. He lets me win pretty much all the time. Has that's it ever, has it ever gotten it. physical? No, we do not some support domestic violence at uh, all. Nice. <laughs> no, like, uh, uh, nah. I'm not. <laughs> uh, but yes, no, he has punched me in the face at the gym. Uh oh. Oh, at the wow. gym. Wait, not but ever. not like in the ring, not in like the locker room or something. No, shit. no. Okay. We were on the mats. We were training together. Okay. And then I taught him this like really cool, like a um, question mark kick. If you know what that is. Uh, you like fake low and you go high. And he did it like perfectly and like dropped his foot on my face. And I had a black eye. And wow. Yeah, you see that. We were training together. We're teammates. It's were you like proud good. of him or were you pissed? No, I was really proud. Like once I woke up, I was really proud. Oh. <laughs> once, once you woke wake up, up in the knocked, hospital, he knocked yeah, you yes. out? He dropped me. I was, yes. <laughs> when you're, did you feel bad? Of course. He, that was the closest. <laughs> of course you felt bad. Her mom was in town too. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Hey, I knocked your daughter out today. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't domestic violence. But I want to make it very clear. I'm not talking about domestic violence. I'm like a, like yeah. maybe he came home a little too late one night or something happened and you're like, okay, like 
a ref comes over, you're like, let's settle this let's settle how this. we do it because we're fighters. No, yeah. I think because I, we are professional fighters, all of our anger gets out in the gym. And uh, most fighters in person are really personable. And it's like, we know. That is true. <sighs> Everyone's so nice. I don't think I've met one fighter. I, I feel like Brock Lesnar would indeed be like this where you meet him and he just wants to kill you. <laughs> is he not like... He looks like he could eat a few people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think he, like, he already he has. has. He has. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you guys fight, like, <clears throat> do you ever worry or like even on a good day, do you ever worry you're just going to or like, do you ever worry you're just gonna catch a drop kick for like some picture you liked on Instagram? <laughs> like she's like, I saw you like that fucking O's photo and just fucking Dude, we had it on the way over here. Oh, on the way over shit. here? Uh oh. <laughs> Exposed. She's like, what happened? Saw, who liked who who liked you? I saw you, you like liking Ronda Rousey. You like Ronda Rousey? She said, hey, we're taking a left coming up here. And I said, Are you sure it's a left or a right? Oh <laughs> hey, are that? you out of your mind? <laughs> Or you take that left and just do another three lefts afterwards, if anything. Just take the left. Uh, I haven't fought in a while because I have to have surgery on my arm soon. I so heard I have about a, this. Let's talk about this. I have a this. lot of built up energy. Uh, so I can I can imagine. So so what happened with your arm? Am I looking yeah, at I, it? Okay, so this one's my okay. clean arm. Beautiful, right? Okay, yeah, it's great. This one with a big hump on it. Whoa! Oh, you got a humpback whale in your arm, in your forearm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I do have to have surgery again on in a week from today, uh, I go get get this one fixed. Oh, it's like Woo! a class four. Oh my God. It's nasty, right? It's like a class four hematoma global. It's a, called a yeah. hyper something no, that's what I said. non-union. That. Hyper non-union. Hyper something non-union. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's the bone protruding out. Yeah. That's, oh. that's your bone sticking that's, out of your yeah. arm. Yes. Oh, that's oh, great. Fair enough. Did you, now, did you shoot the, yeah. the Sports Illustrated swimsuit? Uh, with photos the with broken arm, broken arm? Yes, I did have Absolutely arm in incredible. It. This is my favorite podcast. In the ever. pictures, you can actually see, like, in my source, like, if you see the ones where you see my arm, you can see, like, a. Oh, you're hiding your arm in this one. Oh, maybe they photoshopped it. <laughs> they did good. They did good. No. Oh, wait, that's no, my that's left hand. Arm. Just kidding. This one? Oh, oh yeah, you oh, can see wow. it. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Damn. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure that's what people are going to zoom in on. I was going to say that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But how many guys do you think were like, wow, look at that right arm. <laughs> Hemoglobin. <laughs> Hemoglobin. Yo, this is crazy. That all right, I want to stick to the arm for a second. How, we can leave that up there. That's okay. Fine. Oh, Thanks. that's great. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> how, how much does it hurt you when you get an injury of that significance? Because I read you weren't going to be able to fight for like two what, two months? Or that, well, that no, the therapy is going to be at least three months. And oh. then I'm planning to fight at the end of the year. But this is my third surgery on this arm. Oh, no. So it's been like one thing after another. I uh, Same spot or? Different spot. Okay. I broke it in a completely different spot. So my, how I heard it the first time, I did a spinning back fist in a fight. And I broke my own arm on her forehead. Oh, no. If it would have been like four inches lower, I could have just brutally knocked her out. But is, this, is that, was it like the Anderson Silva, like leg hanging off the shin type? It was pretty nasty. If you could, like, if there was sound to it, you can hear my uh. arm just crack against her forehead. It was absolutely nasty. And then I, that was in the second round. I fought the whole rest of the fight. I actually won the third round with one arm. Uh, do, do, yeah. When you heard that crack, mm -hmm. like, do you ever have a moment of like, <clears throat> What the fuck am I doing? That's what I was thinking. Well, I mean, at first I like heard it happen and I like, you know, cause like your adrenaline takes yeah, over. Yeah. I like didn't know that it was my arm. I was like, awesome. I like, I, I like rushed oh, in to try to like finish the fight. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a second. My arm's, on, this like, doesn't broken. feel right. <laughs> yeah. So I, then I had to have surgery twice to fix it that time. And then I won my fight and just, just in January, I just fought and I won. Come back. I was on like this hot streak. I uh, sparred and... Broke my arm sparring. How do you keep? How do you keep going when you get a, like a serious injury? How do you keep going uh, and improve hmm. and like hop back, hop back? Are, at you, it? are you talking about in the moment? Because I was wondering, like, literally in a fight. Yeah. When you break oh. your arm, like, how do you keep going? That's a great yeah. question. A lot of people tap out. I don't know. I just I'm really stubborn, and I have a lot. Of, I, I was like, that I'm winning this fight. Like, I, I have to win this. I have, did I you win that fight? No, because I broke my arm in it. Yeah, but, that's I, pretty, yeah. Pretty but I uh, was trying my hardest. Is that to... a disqualifier if you if you break your arm? No, you <clears> lose. <throat> but like if you if you tap out, like you're. Yeah, but like, can you continue fighting with a oh, broken yeah. arm? They 100%. stopped. They stopped Anderson Silva's fight though because his his foot was hanging, oh, hanging was off disgusting. by a I mean, skin. You couldn't really tell mine was broken. Like I went to my corners and this is awful. My husband was cornering me too, and I was like, "Hey guys, my arm's broken." And I like dead face. I'm trying not to show like pain or emotion to my opponent. I'm like, "Hey, my arm's broken. I can't throw it." And they're like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Like you is guys, it, it's, I like they thought it was just hurt, and I was like, "No, my arm is broken." broken. As a as a like a protector mm -hmm. um i'm i'm wondering how much i'd be okay with like my wife 
like getting hit. Even, yeah. even if she does want to, you know, like you want to, yeah. it's your passion. But I mean, is that something, does, is that, there a hump for you to get over when you see her getting hit or beat up or breaking her arm? It's like, I'm 10 times more nervous for her to fight. Right. But for, on the flip side too, like when I see her win, I'm more excited. Okay. She so th- wins and even for myself. Everything's just amplified when it's, it's when it's her. Exactly. It's all okay. Amplified yeah. Yeah, it's like, that was his first fight he would ever, like, when, as us as a couple, that was the first fight of mine that he ever went to or experienced or was a part of. Was and the I, like, broken arm fight? Was him cornering me and me breaking my arm in the fight, oh, yeah. Oh By the way, this is this is what I was talking about when you guys yeah. settle arguments. That's it, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's hot. <laughs> right in each other's face. We're really cute. So, on, on the flip side of that question, how how is fighting redefining those traditional wo- roles of a woman in society? Mm, from is your it? Perspective. Nice, Spencer. I think so. Is it? I, I think so. But yeah. I, I, it's so, okay. Rare. Yeah. So I'm all about like women, like building up women and like women empowerment and yep. positivity. But I'm also like, I've never felt like I was on a disadvantage for being a woman. Oh, that's great. And it's like, you guys need to just step up and be the best. Per- I'm not trying to be the best woman in the room. I'm going to be the best person in the room. Mm. And uh, I think that's the mindset that needs to change. That's awesome. So. I, well, I remember I've been following UFC for ever now, ever since I was like a, a young lad in Ohio. And I remember when they uh, first started having females fight. Yeah. And very quickly, they became more exciting than the, the males. Oh, often, way more exciting. Often, Yo, <laughs> these girls go at it. Yeah. I'm terrified of some of them. Yeah. And- well, I think women have like the, one, it's like maternal for us. Like it's in our body to be like fierce and fight back. Mm. And then there's, uh, we go into fights emotionally. Like men can go into it completely strategically and I can have like the strategy behind what I do, but it's always, it's an emotional war for me. Really? So it's like, you go out there and you like, you want to win for your pride and for yourself. Does and- it ever have anything to do with the opponent? Like, I want to, I want to wreck this person because oh, well, I don't like that. I mean, anytime, especially I feel like it's in a sport. I mean, it's not a team versus a team. It's an individual versus an yeah. individual. And you have to understand that there's someone across the entire world training to beat you and mm-hmm. potentially try to like, you know, kill you. It's yeah. like yeah. you're being locked in the cage, punching each other in the face. So uh, there's always emotion behind it. And then afterwards, you always see like any professional fight or 99% of them, you always hug at the end of it because you uh, respect that person's dedication and the work yeah. and the thought that you just, you can't create something like that with another person yeah. except I, for fighting. I often ask myself, because <clears throat> I love the hug at the end, right? Love it. Two yeah. fighters beef, beef, and then they hug at the end, they yep. dab each other up, you know, I respect you. But I often wonder if I like that more or just like, the continued beef. Like when McGregor and Khabib okay, like, yeah. like had that fight, I know it was horrible and it made the UFC look bad, but that was like one of the most exciting things I've ever seen in UFC history. Kept people activated. Yeah. What, have no. you ever had a draw? What, what do you think that- No, I haven't. What do you think that feels like for someone to have oh, a draw? Oh, it's to be awful. It's gotta be one of the most anti Like at Anti-climatic, what point do you just yeah. give up fighting or yeah. even just doing anything after that? you just that? stop? I think you just, uh, no matter what, there should be immediate another fight. Yeah. You should immediately yeah. have to fight again. Listen, all right, yeah. we, we get it. I had a draw. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I was the one with the draw. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> what if she was like, immediately that person yeah, should be disqualified from the sport sure. Yo, and kicked off YouTube? At least demonetized. I always, I always, I always just wonder, like, it, maybe, like, maybe if I would have lost, like, maybe it would have been better. Uh, like, I, seriously. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Draw was No. A loss works. A loss is worse. Way worse. 100%. Yeah, you lose. You lose. What do you think about the Anthony Joshua loss? Do you watch, do you watch boxing? I do not watch boxing. Whoa! Really? <laughs> I'm going to be totally honest. Not but so. no. Uh, I think the biggest thing that was highlighted is, because uh, who was, who was. His name was. Uh, Ruiz. Andy Ruiz. Yeah. He's Andy the one who Ruiz. won it. Yeah. So well, he just isn't the most famous fighter. So it well, wasn't like, you know. Well, he just doesn't look. Like that was what fighter. I heard. Like, yeah. He's, he's also, yeah. It's not that he's not the most famous. He's more so not the most in shape. And so it was a big like, yeah. and it's. He's got second, some layers of meat, man. To first, protect him. And it was the second time in very recent history that a, a large man beat a really fit but, man. I mean, but you have to go. I mean, if you look at. I saw, from, I, I saw, from, for me, ahead. compared to MMA, like look at Daniel Cormier. He doesn't look yes. like an Olympic, I, I, yo, Olympic yeah. level wrestler, but right. he is. I think he's one of the best fighters in the in the league of all time. I, I, like literally, yeah. he is so great. I've been watching him for a while, and every time, yeah, every, 
who, people who come over that don't watch MMA are like, yo, who is this guy? I'm like, no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> DC is going to kill these people. Yeah. But look, I saw this photo. This went kind of viral. 2012 Joshua versus 2012 Ruiz. This awesome. is Joshua at the Olympics. This is Andy Ruiz taking a bathroom selfie saying, me chilling after I took a shit. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. There's, there's hope for everyone. Literally, like you, you can become whatever you want. This body was positivity. Seven years ago. Not, 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 and not in, not just body positivity, but also just like, Men, like mental positivity. Like imagine like going from something like that to a few years later being the fucking champion. Like yeah. I, I said it in a video uh, the other day, just a few positive changes, small positive yeah. changes even can make the biggest waves in your life and turn you into something that, you know, you never thought you'd be. But what, yeah. what had to happen for him to even <sighs> get that fight? Like somebody got disqualified. Yeah. He was a substitute. He was a replacement. Like that never Crazy. happens. Yeah. It's wild. Damn. He's got fast hands though. Like He's mad quick. respect. He's quick as yeah. fuck. And bro, uh, I heard the fighting Mexicans is like these, they're ruthless. They're ruthless. McGregor made a tweet about it. Yeah, and he, they, it was like they, Nate they, Diaz's bloody face. And he's like, oh, the Mexican blood is, whew, they're tough. It's that they mm. don't, they won't stop fighting. Won't they have quit. so much heart. Yeah. Well, that's what they were saying. I don't know. When the cage locks, yep. the door shuts, cage locks. Yep. What are you thinking? That's, okay. that's a, that's a moment. So I get asked about nerves a lot too. It's like in that same arena. Uh, extremely nervous for fighting. Every time I fight, I'm extremely nervous. And no matter how much I've prepared, no matter who I'm fighting, whether I feel like I'm going to destroy them or whether I think that they have the edge, uh, nervous every time until the first punches, until you're hit in the face the first time, that's when everything calms down. Mm. Like mm. I, I feel extremely nervous. I get hit once. I'm like, all right, game time. I know what I'm doing. I've been here before. Uh, takes you yeah, off one punch. And then you, I mean, you see it a lot. People will like, you'll f see the nerves when they walk out and then they start getting into a rhythm the further the fight goes. Uh, that's pretty much what it takes. You ever worried about damaging your face? I get asked that a lot Or too. brain? Brain, yes. My face, actually, I heard statistically people who have scars on their face are more attractive. Scars are cool as Wait, that's hell. awesome. Scars I've been boxing. So cool. I've been sparring these past couple of days and I got... I got like a bunch of what the heck is going on? Right? Or you, or on my body? Or you sparring with a freaking hyena? We got a we got a pool party like coming up Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, these are gonna look fucking fire, bro. Girls gonna be like, what happened? I'll be like, I don't know. I boxed. Twice. Also keep <laughs> also keep in mind those are you <laughs> went you went home without a band aid. Those aren't scars. They're little scratches. Well, look yeah. at this one. Well, that's my nipple. <laughs> Still nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just I thought there was one help. there. Oh, I swear to God, man. I mean, we could get you one. Paige could get you one very easily. You want a scar? Look at that. Okay, that's. I mean, there. Andre's packing bigger than that right now. I fell off a skateboard, motorized skateboard. Can, can we somehow show what happened? I want to. I'm gonna go show Paige. I'm the camera man. All right, Andre. Oh, it's wrapped, yeah, Logan. It's yeah, wrapped. Yeah, yeah. It's wrapped right now, actually. Uh, this is bad, what dude. Happened to this you? is brutal. Oh boy. Oh. This whole oh. Area. oh. oh no. Ah. Oh. Yeah, Let me good. see. I mean, it's. Ooh, I mean, you're a road rash. Look, look at the top. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you fall off a skateboard? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's still cameraing and pulling. Okay, we should pull up my face after I fought Rose. <laughs> Let's pull it up. Let's go. Up. That's a good one. Oh, boy. Pull it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just type Paige Van Zandt bloody face. Okay. Paige Van Zandt. Bloody face. Bloody. That is when I got cut face. open on my cheek. Oh! No. No. Whoa. No, no. I don't like it. That's a good one. Oh, I don't like it. Oh my god. Wait, and is that and what do you, do you I have? I got cut over my yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah, I see that. That's yeah. such a deep cut. Oh yeah, blood everywhere. I don't There's like blood it. Everywhere. We were all slippery, and it, that happened in the first round. It was a five round fight. And what you I, were, I've always wondered so how how is it that they allow? Do you have to get like blood work done to yeah, oh, to yeah. make sure you the, have so much blood work done before every single fight? So so, so yeah. it's okay. for This me could be the cover of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Together. I'm not even kidding. Wow, oh that's my. cute. What's your favorite bodily substance to to have on you when you're fighting? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a loaded question. I'm <laughs> saying like there's sweat. There's spit that fly out, flies out of people's mouths. Some people there's poop. blood. Blood's cool. I'm cool with blood. Someone like else's I, blood. I know it sounded bad, but like I'm I'm genu like yeah. when I'm sweating and I'm up against a dude, like I'm like, oh, this is go time. When blood comes out, whoo, I was just gonna I was unleash gonna, the yeah. beast. Okay. I when I make someone else question, bleed, question, please fucking forgive me. I, I love making someone else bleed because then it's like <laughs> you know you impose but, your will on them. But to his point. I, tasting or like any of your own blood in your mouth, like any of that shit makes you go fucking like I like anytime I have blood yeah. pouring somewhere, it just puts you in a hole. You're like, yo, I'm I'm at risk here. I gotta do Bleeding. something. Yeah. Oh, this girl did that? Yeah. That's, she's that's she's going kind of viral, huh? Session eight Yeah, O'Connor. she's doing really good. Who's the who's the you're flyweight, yeah? Uh this was at straw weight. I'm a flyweight now. Okay. This is a weight class. Who's, who who has the belt right now? 
Uh, at, sh- which one? Which division? There was actually two switch turnovers. Oh, for real? Fly yeah. weight, flyweight right at now. Flyweight would be uh, Shevchenko. Okay, okay. When you when you watch these people fight, um, <clears throat> is there something inside of you? Uh, I mean, do you watch him fight? Because I saw TJ Dillashaw yeah. say that he actually doesn't enjoy watching people fight because he gets anxiety. He's like, am I training yeah. hard enough? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, anytime you see a competitor doing something excessive yeah. or competing, you wonder if you're doing enough or if they're mm. better than you or if they're training more or watching fights. I mean, it just gets you amped up to fight. Is there, is there anything that, what's the remedy to that? Is that when you see someone, when you see your opponent in Saturday night, you guys are on a date and you see your opponent in the gym on Saturday night. Have you ever, is there- Oh, you get pissed. Well, cause I'm, I'm yeah. going through it right now. Like, okay. you know, I see a video case. I am like, oh, am I doing enough? Whatever. And now I'm fucking training every day and it's great. But yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I don't know. It gives me a little anxiety maybe thinking, am I doing enough? Isn't that a great way to learn though? Like if you're, yeah. <clears throat> if you're watching, not learn, but like learn about your competition, you're watching someone that's, you know, say they're throwing a really good jab and you're like, damn, I got to work on my jab. Like, it, it, isn't it nice to just report that back to your coach and be like, yo, are we doing enough here, here, here? And then look for room to improve. Definitely. But I think for me, it's, I just have trust in my coaches when it comes to like making fights and stuff. I'll have like my manager, be like, oh, these are the people that are potential for you to fight. And then I just relay it to my coaches. They pick who I'm going to fight. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's it. We tell them, yep, this is the next opponent. So it's more on, of course, I know what I'm good at, but my coaches and teammates know better than gotcha. I do. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I got to ask, what, why did you start fighting? Why? What why? was it? Where did the desire come from? Okay. So I grew up in a small town in Oregon. Oregon. Uh, I was actually a dancer competitively and a cheerleader. So I was a cheerleader mm-hmm. my freshman year of high school. Uh, cheerleaders are really mean. <laughs> I was oh, extremely yeah. bullied. So I moved to Nevada and I was like, you know, I, I don't want to do that anymore. And my dad actually was like, hey, do you want to go like try an MMA class with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, I tried it and I f- instantly fell in love. I was 15. I ended up being like really good at it. I got into boxing first. So Were you I an athlete? Few- yeah. Okay. I mean, I was a competitive dancer when I was yeah. like 10. So um, I was actually pursuing an industry into like the dan- professional dance world. Uh, and then ended up, I was actually dancing for the Blazers for a little while. Wow. So, uh, no. And then we moved and I was like, all right, I, I need to do something else and started fighting. I picked it up really quickly. Uh, by the time I was 18, I had my first amateur fight. Uh, I'd only had one amateur fight and I went straight pro and my career took off. Wow. And yeah. Pop, Pops was cool with all of it. Like, he oh, was he just- loved it. Oh, he was like, finally something I can actually like support. Oh. He, Damn, oh, that's he, he like supporting cheerleading. He was supportive, but it was like, he w- didn't want to go. Uh. It wasn't something he was passionate about. My dad was a wrestler too. So oh, okay. he was a high school wrestler. I wrestled in college for a little while. And uh, did you ever want to fight one of the other dancers? And that's what like really sparked oh, it. Yes. <laughs> did no, you fight I, one of them? And, no, and you're I like, damn, never, I got a punch. I have never been in a fight outside of the cage ever. Still to this day right Still now. Still to this day. No. Me either. I really want to. I really want to. Really? No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't like, speak I really that do. into existence. No, I'm, no, I'm speaking don't. into existence. Uh, Can we make that happen? The still? only thing The only thing that's cool about, f- I don't know how to phrase this. The only thing that's cool about fight, because I've been in endless fights. The only yeah. thing that's cool about fighting outside of a sanctioned is that there is no rules. Like, that well, yeah. is, 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 I, I know that sounds that's bad. That's also the worst part about it. It, it is, but assuming that the person is relatively fair, like head butts, like all that, like yeah. that's legal in UFC, but like it can, it gets fun. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> We actually can't headbutt each other. Oh, you can't? No. No, you can't. You do that in the streets? But you know, like, if you were to in a street fight, I know if I go punch somebody on the street, I'm probably going to break my hand. Yeah. Like, 90% of the time, you break your hand. You actually hurt yourself. I heard that. It does. Yo, I might, if I ever get in a street fight, I don't don't think I'm going to punch. I think I'm going to do slaps. Because I knocked a dude out slapping him. I saw that. Yeah, so you don't have to, um, you you don't have to worry about maybe breaking your hand as much as you would. By the way, I just want to say, this is by far his worst, the worst yeah. technical <laughs> difficulty host performance. I'm asking disgusting questions that, that it sounded bad. I know it's still weighing heavy on my mind. I'm so fucking sorry. It's okay. The the laptop is dying. Uh, I've spilled coffee. There's usually Should one. I quit? No, so, no, 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 That sign was so expensive this is not though, a that we can't change the sign. <laughs> this is not a guest host episode. But yeah, but take a, take a breather. Take a breather if you want. Just take a lap. Take a lap. Take a lap. Walk it off. Take a water. Just walk it off. All right. So wait, where do you, where do you live right now? I live in Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Yes. And it's wonderful. What is that? Is it? Is you're having a lot of fun he's there? Upset. Yeah, actually, I mean, I've lived all over the place. I've moved for fighting. Is he okay? Yeah, he's, no, he's, really, fine. he's not feeling good. Man. He's upset. <laughs> hey, 
I mean, we can do it. <laughs> no, he's good. Literally, okay, we cool. can, we can, we can totally keep going. Well, let's go to the book. I want to okay. go to the book. So you wrote a book. Yep. Uh, why did you write a book and is it, it's out now? It is out now. Okay. Yeah, my book actually came out last year. Thank you. That was for you and Logan. Welcome back to the show, there Captain. But also for now for the book. <laughs> Thank We're, you. Congrats. We're uh, turning a new AOE. chapter. Wow. <laughs> Good one. Oh We're on a new page. So Rise, Surviving the Fight of My Life. Yep. I have a huge question. How okay. long did it take you to write it? Oh my gosh, like, uh, I guess the whole process of when I actually decided to, because I had been journaling my entire life. So I always had these little pieces of work to go off of. Okay. Uh, it wasn't until I started the process of when I was like, all right, I'm actually going to make this a book. I'm going to like sell it. I'm going to do the whole thing. It took me like two years to put together, work with, <sighs> working with different, like first, like, of course, because I'm not a writer. So it's like, then I have to get it to an editor and they have to be like, oh, this sucks. And then you have to like go through and redo the entire process and go a different direction. Uh, so the whole process took about two years from, you know, when I like submitted my first piece of work. And uh, I think it was just time. I mean, especially there's like the Me Too movement going on. I felt like it was the perfect moment for me to share my story, especially coming from an extreme. I went through extreme bullying as a kid. And I was going to ask what you were uh, bullied for. Oh my gosh, everything. I and I think and it, I don't think necessarily someone has to have a reason to be bullied. They just mm. become a target. And I was just the target. I made varsity cheerleading as a freshman. Uh, and from uh, that uh. moment on, people just hated me. So I thought it was time. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me their stories. And I was like, you know what? If these people who have no idea who I am can tell me their entire life story and say like, hey, I look up to you for it then I can share mine, so. Mike's writing a book right now, yeah, not that, to sidetrack. That's uh, why he's asking. I'm, selfish, I'm semi-selfishly, yeah. I've been working okay. on it for a long time. I had a, um, I say this, and every time I say it, I do it just for a little bit of context for the guests. I had a battle with drug addiction for a long time, okay. but, but people always comment, another episode, Mike's talking about it. I give it as a little <laughs> tiny piece of fucking context. Can leave Mike alone, please. Like, anyways, uh, and like getting off drugs or like doing anything like that. The hardest thing I've had to deal with is writing this fucking book. It's it is hard. so hard. It's, it's really such hard. a massive project. And uh, I liken it to molding a statue of yourself out of clay. Mm -hmm. The first run through, you have this like really dumb looking like blob of clay. And then yeah. you start to like etch out eyes and a nose like on the next pass. And then an editor helps you get like but some shape. Yeah. How do you Crazy. how do you kind of get past that feeling of being overwhelmed? Yeah, when you're coming up against a project like um, that. Um, gosh, I don't know. I, I just deal you with just it. it. I mean, I feel like it's just life. You just always have obstacles, and it was just a little piece of. I think it's almost it was a little bit easier because it's like I'm, I get to talk about myself, and I'm writing about myself, and I'm sharing the pieces of my life that I think are important. And I think it was picked up kind of it was picked up like immediately because it was a story that people needed to hear. Yeah, you're, that's that's got to be super helpful too yeah. because so like at, early on in the process mm -hmm. someone came in and kind of guided you a little right bit. away when that's, i was like hey this I is need. what yeah. I, i'm gonna i'm putting this out like this is this is my story and they're like immediately picked up on it and wanted to help him i haven't selected an agent yet so your book is called <laughs> please contact me and help me it's called rise surviving the fight of my life yep and i know a little bit about it but it'd be cool to explore that with you if you're if you're open yeah um what was the fight of your life so I reveal in the book through, uh, I went through a sexual assault trauma and it happened in high school. And then it kind of just talks about exactly what happened. And then what I explains like what actually wasn't the worst part of it was the sexual trauma. It was everything that happened after it is being mm -hmm. like victimized by my peers because of it and having a target on my back, looking, looking like it was my fault and like being just having fingers pointed at me saying like, oh, this happened to you. You're like disgusting because of it. Hmm. And I think through that, people need to realize like, it's not your fault. And people should, I don't know, see these stories from people who are in the public eye that's happened. It happens to everybody. And I think what's great about the Me Too movement is there's a lot of other people who it hasn't even gotten that far, but we need to step up and be like, hey, this isn't okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you suffer any long-term <clears throat> mental like anguish, I'm sure, like depression, oh, yeah, anxiety? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I went from being a 14-year-old kid with tons of friends and so positive and confident and I, I mean, I was a professional dancer as a kid and I was extremely happy with myself. And then all of a sudden to realize that people couldn't like me, it was like a huge wake up call. And when I, by the time I was 15, after going through all of that, I had um, extreme anxiety to the point I couldn't leave the house without my mom. Like my mom had to walk me into school every day. You know, 15 year old kid, normally yeah. they're like, oh, I don't want to be seen with my parents. I couldn't go to the grocery store alone. 
My mom had to walk me through wow. the grocery store. I had like severe anxiety about being alone. And um, understandably. Oh, it was yeah. awful. So yeah, I actually decided to drop out of high school and I went to college when I was 16. So luckily, luckily I was in a place where I was, you know, I could test into a college program at an extremely young age. Uh, I dropped out of high school. I just decided I, I didn't want to be around that in my life anymore. Um, but I guess I didn't understand ever. Like I'm a Christian and I've always wondered, like I had anger at God. Like why could that happen to me? Mm -hmm. And now I come back to it and I'm like, okay, I understand why it had to happen to me. And I was given this platform to talk about it and yeah. share my experience. And um, no, I would never be happy for what happened, but I feel like now I have a voice and I'm excited that I get to share it. Do you have a, do you have a message to anybody that might be watching the show, any young girls that might be watching the show or girls of any kind that have gone through anything like that, that you'd want yeah, to tell Yeah, definitely. It's like, you know, it's the thing you hear over and over again and you roll your eyes out is like, say something. And like mm. you can tell people over and over again, you need to speak up, but you absolutely do. I was going through it completely alone. My mom kind of knew something happened to me, but I never told her. And it took until uh, I had a friend who she actually came to me and was like, hey, this happened to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that happened to me too. And I was able to explain it to her. And then- This was like a repeated offense by- no, no, this was like somebody okay, else. Seven, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Every, no, it was just one time. But I was like, hey, it happened to me. And then I was able to, uh, you know, luckily there's like a statute of limitations. So I was able to actually go. I made a police report if I ever chose to go to court and press charges. I was going to say, was, was there any legal action taken? I made a statement. I still technically, there. I think the statute of limitations thing has dropped. So if something like that ever happens to you, you can continue to press charges what was forever. But I just... I never really wanted to live through that experience again. And um, I put yeah. the book out and I felt like my voice is heard. Do you still have... Uh, anger towards the 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 people who did that to you? Um, of course. I think I have a little bit of like the regret. Like what if, because I never did anything legally, what if they're doing it to other people? Yeah. Of course, I, I consistently go through that. But I feel like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just at a point where I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm never mad. I'm just so successful. I'm wildly more successful than any of them. Yeah. Um, and I do, I guess I've seen... Uh, you know, what they're doing now in their lives. And I'm like, wow, I'm me being where I am in my platform I'm on. And the story being told is like punishment enough for them. Um, so, so I do, don't know, I'm, feel good. Do you think that's kind of the beauty in the Me Too movement? Like you were mentioning yeah. is that that's preventing these things from happening to other people because you're voicing up? Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, it's almost like I feel like now the Me Too movement, people are started rolling their eyes at it. They're, and you're like, oh, another politician that's caught in a scandal. But it's something that's like, it needs to be like, this is happening every single day and it needs to not be something you roll your eyes at or it's not another story. I feel like instead of, you know, putting these people on a platform to where like they have to prove their innocence, it should be like, oh, something needs to change with the way we're teaching our youth yeah. how to act. <clears throat> and um, is that, I read is that, this. On, is that on both sides or only for, for men? I think it's on both sides. And yeah. I think, I, so I actually read the statistic that was like, oh, we need not, we don't need to teach our men like more, po we don't need more positive women figures. We need more positive ma male figures. Yeah. A lot of the people who are doing this are 100% raised by women. And how will they ever know how to act like a man if they've never seen a positive yeah. one? Mm -hmm. So we need to like, I think we could, and I understand, I think women should be like, this is a great woman role model, but we need more men. Just this is what like positive men are doing. And like, they're doing these amazing things and try to act like that. You know, who's doing a great job of that. Anyone heard of <coughs> Justin Baldoni? Mm -mm. Shout out Justin mm -mm. Baldoni. I think I've heard of him. Like, this guy is, I mean, he's doing a plethora of things about um, men becoming men and sort of ending toxic masculinity. And he's, mm -hmm. he's one of the guys like kind of pioneering that. I think he directed a, he did direct a film just, uh, that just came out called Five Feet Apart. Mm -hmm. uh, Cole Sprouse was in it. Side note, but do, do you take do you take that pain with you and that anger if there is still any in the ring uh -huh. with you when you fight? Does that fuel um, you? No. So actually, when I first started training, it was I would have panic attacks and like flashbacks when I um, was grappling, mm -hmm. and then I would like yeah. run to the locker room and just start bawling and crying and have these like extreme panic attacks. And gosh, I feel so bad for my coaches. I was the only female in the gym, and then if I would like get in these foods and just start bawling and crying, <laughs> he had no idea what to do. Uh, but we've worked through that. Uh, no, actually, I don't really think about it on a daily basis at all. Um, it took until, I mean, gosh, I started having therapy. Going, I had to go to therapy. I to was just going to ask that. What did it feel like, <clears throat> not only that first time, I'm mostly yeah. that first time, but what did it feel like when you when you <clears throat> started being able to talk about it? Um, Gosh, it took like 10 years, to be totally honest. It took a long time to like really um, get that start. Courage. Yeah, get the courage. And actually, I had never talked about it until my book was out. <clears throat> 
it was something I kind of told my parents, like, hey, I had to like tell, break it to my parents before wow. the book came out and say like, hey, this book is coming out. This is something that happened in my life. And then I just kind of let the book do the talking from there. Have you had any stories emerge after you put the book out? From people coming oh, to you. Oh, 100%. And, a lot of people have come to yeah. me. Men, women, kids, adults. It's something that they needed to just hear to, I don't know. I feel like at that point in my life, I didn't have somebody to look up to that had been through this similar situation. I came from an extremely small town and stuff like that's just not heard of. And little do you know, I mean, that's happening all the time. And like I heard the most sad statistic from the high school I went to where it all happened. Um, three people had committed suicide in six months. And I don't know if it's like because it's a toxic place or if because yeah. that stuff like that is accepted. <laughs> I actually was able to go back to that same town and speak at schools That's cool. after it, after the case. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, speaking with you, you seem so uh, bubbly and optimistic. And I could be wrong when I say uh. this, but how I'm assuming that that incident, incident did not skew your... Um, viewpoint on human nature mm -hmm. and and the character of men specifically mm -hmm. did it at, um, at some point or I would say still to this day I'm working on like trust trustworthiness I still don't trust people and it, it takes a long time for me to get to that point to where I can finally like trust someone and even now which and this is like the weirdest part for me is I have like zero girlfriends uh, like I really? stopped trusting. It didn't make me stop trusting men. It made me stop trusting girls. Like all of the girls that were the closest to me, my best friends turned on me mm. when all that happened. So mm. it made me like, I don't know, just feel like I need to just kind of have a small, keep my like circle small. My husband's my best friend, but she's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I What's mean, that like? Different things happen. I mean, it's anything like PTSD from people who come back from like serving in the military to different traumas you go through in life. Everybody goes through it differently, has different, um, you know, reactions. Do you, think, do you think it's partially because of just the difference in your interests with like a, another group of females? Like you're a fighter. There's probably not that many closed circles. Like, yeah, can you be friends well, with fighters? Yes. No, that is hard too. Uh, there's, I mean, there's no girl, there's only a few girls that go to my gym. So I obviously don't do a lot in the industry with other women. I'm a professional fighter. My gym's all men. And I think that made it easier is because I walked, when I walked into the gym, there wasn't a single other girl there. I was like, okay, nobody's judging me here. Nobody, I, I didn't expect anybody to talk to me and I felt perfect. I didn't need to talk to people. I can kind of just go in and do my well, own mo thing. Most girls are posting like brunch photos and you're out, <laughs> yeah, but you're posting Beating punch photos. Yeah. Like, you know, it's punch. just you punch. You're just punching. What's it feel like when girls reach out to you with, what's it feel like when, when different girls reach out to you with problems they've been through or like, you know, especially like situations like you went through, what does that feel like for you? Oh, it's heartbreaking. I mean, anytime I have to, like, I know how hard it was for me. And, but then to hear other women whose stories are even like worse than mine, like it's heartbreaking. But I also know that what I'm doing, like, I'm doing it for a purpose. You're making an I mean, it makes sense. I'm making an impact. I've always wondered, like, even for me, I didn't know that I ever wanted to be a professional fighter. I didn't know that. I just it happened. I just was good at it. And my career took off when I was, you know, 19, 20 years old. And now that I'm in this position, I'm like, okay, this is why I'm so successful. I guess I finally wa I wanted to know, like, why, why was I put in this platform? And it's, you know, to make a difference and talk about what I've been through and go from there. Do you, do I, I have think... a question about solutions because yeah. I've been to a lot of different schools and mm -hmm. I really don't see like m a big change happening. Yeah. Like, I know there is, I know there are, you know, grassroots movements, but how could we through public schools and through parenting, like yeah. actually prevent this stuff? Um, I think it, it in a sense that it is human nature. People who do those terrible things are terrible people. But I also think what would make it easier is um, to teach our kids compassion. I think it comes from Hell parents yeah. need to teach mm. their children compassion, how what they do affects somebody for the rest of their life. And some of the things I went through from my peers, I will remember forever. <laughs> and that's like one, uh, the biggest tell I want to like, have kids learn is I'm going to, if I say something to you, you will remember it for the rest of your life. And you, you may not remember exactly what that person said, but you'll always remember how they made you feel. And so now being in my position, I can look back and be like, you, there's these people in my life that I will forever know they made me feel disgusting. And you don't want to be that person to be an adult, be in your adult career and know that there's somebody out there that you, that did, that too. you did that too, that will hate you forever. I know mm -hmm. this is stacked kind of, but <clears throat> it's a question I ask you because I think about it myself sometimes, but would you remove that event from your life if you could? 
That's a hard one. Um, pro- probably not because I, I do think that everything happens for a reason. And each chain of events, if that didn't happen to me, my parents had to move out of the state because I was so traumatized. Yep. So I would have never moved. I would have never found fighting and I would have never met my husband because of fighting my life. I mean, I wouldn't be here doing all of this kind of stuff if that never happened. It was like the real, that was the turning point in my life that like got me into fighting and drove me to be successful. Yeah. So crazy how yeah. some of the yeah. worst things in life can end up being the biggest blessings and yeah. can make the biggest changes in your life. I relate, I relate yeah. to that. So probably. encouraging. Yeah. I feel like that tends to be the case. A yeah. lot of, a lot of people that have had some sort of uh, traumatic experience in their life often attribute that to the, the success that they Hell achieve yeah. later in life. The, the rock speaks on it a lot. Actually, mm-hmm. he had an incident with his mom when he was younger. Um, they were driving and his mom hopped out of the car on the freeway. And I think she, I think she attempted to get hit by a car. And mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, you know, you can imagine what kind of effect that had on it's like, yeah. young Dwayne Johnson. And, uh, he carries that with him to this day and, you know, hit the gym every day, had seven bucks in his pocket, made something of, of himself. And now he's Dwayne Johnson. But anyway, yep. incredible. So, no. it's awesome. Incredible. Some of the, the, the sorry, notes, sorry, some sorry, of the notes. Sorry, from sorry. Our- <laughs> I, if I'm being honest with you, we have this, we have this, this, it's not a problem, but sometimes I'll just be like, just saying something and Dylan will turn around on the laptop and, and flash me a note that says no, but I, legacy you'll, you'll leave. leave. No, 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 it's, hold on, let me, let me, no, no, let me ask. Legacy you'll leave. <laughs> legacy you'll leave. put full sentences on Yes, <laughs> because it's. Legacy you'll leave. <laughs> I was going to ask something and then and then I looked at you, bro. I saw and you I looked just, at Paige in the need. eyes, you just went blank. We well, bro, nothing. I was just staring at Paige. Like, I, literally, I was just like, I was just like, yo, the captain of our ship, like, please, what are you going to do? Like, Where do we go? He is, he just said nothing, bro. He literally, nothing. It, what it does when he flashes that is it makes Logan short out. <laughs> I, that is quite literally what happens. He turns it and I see Logan and he's, he's on a note and yeah. he goes like this and he goes, he lost, lost lost for a minute. Well, also, 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 Danny just texted me. The sand is here. We're having like 50,000 pounds of sand shipped here for a party on Sunday. Are you guys going to be here Can Sunday? Can uh, no. Fuck. There, what? That's fine. Why don't we just handle it? What's happening with the sand? So now I'm distracted because we got to log that. But also like we have so many good things to talk about. We got facts with Spencer. Can we do that? All right, let's do facts. Do a segment. Of course. There's, fuck, I, fuck. There's no way it I'm works. I'm sorry. I've been covering There's you. There's absolutely no way no, no, anything I got technical this. I, works on this podcast. I got today. it. But I will say I've been doing a lot of covering you on this one. So I'm, I, as you've seen, I'm sure with the computer passing, I've failed the soundboard That's test. a really intense password. Hold on a second. Yeah. It's just it's a bunch of ones in a row. Ones. Let's yeah. do a segment. There there we go. Time. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Facts with Spencer. Facts. Hey, and now I can begin. Wow. So Nicki Minaj reveals she ensures her paychecks match her fellow rappers. So uh, she says, Uh, one thing I learned along the way in business is necessity for you to be unapologetic about asking for how much money you deserve. Mad respect. Oh, I love that that so much. I wanted wanted to bring this up because, you know, I'm curious with women fighting versus male fighting. Like, do you kind of implement this as well? That's an interesting um, little piece of a little tidbit. Um, I'm actually on the last fight of my UFC contract. So <gasps> I have Are you going to battle tour next. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just, I want to prove how much I'm worth. And I feel like it's going to take one more fight. I've had injuries. I, I, you know, I do a lot of other things outside of fighting. Um, I've had injuries that have kept me out of the cage and I want to go on a two fight win streak okay. to prove that. And I think it's important for anybody because it is an individual sport. Of course we have our team, our management team fighting for us, but I think it's ultimately up to us to decide our own fate. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and I want to do that. You should. Is, you definitely secure the bag though. Not that I looked this up, but I did. Your net worth said three point five million dollars. Let's go. What? I don't know. She's like, that's way low. I don't know. It was that a so mine's that, high as fuck too, I, I and it's just not like that. Was it's that a wage high. gap question? Right? It was. It was female versus male rappers. Is that what the fact was? Well, yeah. I mean, she's just saying that. I mean, she didn't even take that into account. Like she was explaining if you know other rappers can command a crowd. Then and she can do the same thing. Then she should be getting paid the yeah, same. Yeah, but amount I'm of money. assuming it's wage gap based, right? Like this is about her getting the same amount as her male yeah, counterparts. Yeah, you know who's doing this as a male? Who? Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Arnold. Doctor uh, Strange. Yeah, he will not take a role if his female counterpart is not getting paid the Amazing. same as him. Oh, that's kind of cool. There now, we go. Here's, here's my question. This is where it gets a little dicey. Mm-hmm. What about on the flip side, where males feel the wage gap? Do like, for example the adult film industry, okay? <gasps> Males oh. are paid uh. next to nothing. And to be honest with you, I think our penises are worth a good amount of money. I think we're very important because guess what? Depends on the penis, bro. Facts with Spencer, Johnny, but also, <laughs> Johnny but also 
<laughs> Unless we want all lesbian scenes, let's make sure, which would be great also, 2019, I love the idea of it, but let's make sure that we are paying our penises properly, people. <laughs> that was so many peas. <laughs> paying our penises properly. Probably people. Awesome. <laughs> it's incredible. Hey. That's a, that's a good point. Sorry, that's awesome. sorry. That's incredible. What else we got? All right, so on a different note, Amazon, right. <laughs> Amazon debuts its new delivery drone. It will what? Be, oh, it will be, God. It will begin what? operation in months. Shut up. They've been yeah. saying I this. I thought that was a joke. That was, no, they've been no, no, saying no, no, this because no. listen to what you just said. They will start their operation in months. That's crazy. What the fuck How does that mean? How many months, man? <laughs> you, you, you should put... Uh, well, I'm going to be totally honest. I had dead. a drone flying above my house and I tried to knock it down in the air with a rock. I just don't yeah, want yeah, drones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did. on me, yeah. you know? That is weird. We had that happen yeah, all the time. Right? We, we do um, merch cannons uh -huh. uh, and basketballs we throw at the drones. The, right, and towels. Yeah. Towels will get them. I used a baseball yeah. bat as the Hulk. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh no, the Thor hammer. No, but she's talking about a stranger, like a stranger drone. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Does it, I don't know who's going to go outside drone. and beat that. Actually, you can't. I don't know where we can't. What yeah, state illegal. do you live in again? Oregon. Oregon. What's the ass beating rules like there? Legal. Legal. In illegal, Washington, right? they have a mutual combat law. If you both decide to fight, you can just fight. With no, Washington? Yeah. Washington. Wow. Go get in a fight in Washington. Mutual I combat. I am fuck. so down. That's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. Hey, it looks hey, like my laptop are coming back online. Do you want to fight me? Let's do it. Legally, let's go. Combat. More, yeah, mutual combat. <laughs> Murder. That's Wait, where awesome. do you, where, how far can the fight go just to not dying? Probably right on the, right on the cusp of death. Just walk that. Yeah. Line. Oh, you're you're asking how far right. the drones can fly. Oh, well, they can actually carry five pounds to customers <laughs> within a half hour and can fly up to fifteen miles. That's, That's okay. how many That's Amazon asking. centers are within fifteen miles of like, Encino, for example. Yeah, oh, we're, we're good. Millions. They were right? Gucci yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They're putting them up all what over were the place. You say? I was gonna say, like, why reinvent the wheel? Like, delivering a package already works. Why do you need to? Be well, the because they're not. It? They well, because the drones fly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think it's simply put. I think it's a time thing. Okay. You can actually order a package. Say you wanted a new mouth guard cool. right now on the show right because now. you wanted to beat the shit out of Logan. Yep, yep. Understandably, sucks as a host right today. Now. Okay. You want it Worst right day now. Ever. Drone flies in, beep, pop, drops it off to you, stick it in your mouth, good to go. Yeah. Like that fast. Okay. It's more efficient. It's what, any okay. sort of aviation laws? There's got to be some sort uh, of yeah, that's, regulation. That's basically there. all of them. That's what they're you working can't out fly right now. Near an airport. Well, plus it's no like way. the noise. Oh, no, yeah. The noise. You've heard a drone take off. <laughs> I mean, it'd be pretty quick. Fast. Okay. Okay. Is that it, or do you want another one? <laughs> I want more facts. Okay. I want more facts. Right. So Robert Downey Jr., oh, he, he announced on his Instagram, got over 7 million likes, which what? might be taken away soon. By the way, quick hit that. Jay Alvarez posted a story last night with it in motion. Like this girl and this girl and others. Page. I heard that. I'm just going to pretend it doesn't happen. Why you like likes? I mean, you have, You're a liker? I mean, you have to like likes. How could you not uh, like likes? What if your engagement sucks, dude? Some of these Insta models. Oh, oh, okay. But your engagement is still there. Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm good. Well, you, you, see you can the, see your likes. Yeah, you get oh. to see But not everyone else can see. So but, like, okay. Yeah. But then, I mean, for me, it's like, but then you can still show, you can still show somebody yeah. like a screenshot of your engagement. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. A brand, yeah like a brand, for Yeah, like a brand. Okay, then it is a Or like for me, a girl that you're going after. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what sure. I'm saying? Like, look how many likes this picture got. Logan's laptop is officially The worst day. Of oh, my hosting you spill career. Coffee on your laptop. Just coffee it's on it, though. Yeah. This, this is different. one of the fears. A critical software, software update, update is required for your Mac, but, but an, an error has encountered, encountered while installing this update. update. Oh, no. Yeah, you really hate to see that. That it's, is bad It's crazy. News. These are the kind of things that happen when I imagine, like, yo, God forbid I ever had my own podcast. What would you do at this point when you're just a flubbering idiot and you don't have two of the best-looking co-hosts in the fucking world? And you have dude. a guest on the show. Yeah. And you yeah. have a guest on the show. Oh, yeah, but and I was, I was like a short minute late. I was a minute late, dude. I walked in. Well, maybe Robert Downey Jr. can save us, What's right? What's his fact? So fact? he is creating, we, we don't know what it is. He just, he's creating a footprint coalition. And Amazing. so there's a, there's a website you can go to from his Instagram. It leads you to a form to fill out if you want to get involved. Nobody knows what it is. But he says, between robotics and nanotechnology, we could probably clean up the planet significantly, if not entirely, within a decade. So he's motivated to uh, basically clean up the planet. Make make plan. Hey, I mean, shout listen, out, shout I, out Iron Man. I love Amazing. the I love the end game there. That's that was good. That was almost not even on. I that's enough. That was almost not even on purpose. I love his end game, but like, dude, like, what the fuck am I signing up for, bro? Yeah. Like, I'm I mean, not dude, it's Robert Downey Jr. Though that's why I'm saying it. You don't have to worry about what you're signing up for. That's it's Iron Man, bro. If he was that good, he wouldn't have fucking died. 
Do, dom, dominoes, yeah, would, dominoes wouldn't be his dad. favorite game. Or pizza. Domino, or pizza. Or pizza. Yeah, he says, I have this <laughs> quiet Fuck. sense of crisis. So he he's... Uh, we were talking about this earlier. You got to flex responsibly because he said, you know, from flying in his jets to like all this traveling, he feels guilty about the carbon footprint that he's left behind. Can so I, now he's given back. Do you think, well, I'm wondering if he's even actually Robert Downey Jr. anymore. You know what, what I'm saying? What do you think? Here's, let me elaborate. I, I believe he is strictly and purely only Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. I do not see him as a human <laughs> yeah, named Robert Downey Jr. Okay. And I feel like he has now adopted the mentality of Tony Stark who wants to save the planet. Yeah. And I mean, now he's a that's robotics cool. environmentalist. That's what he's called yeah. himself. But yeah. that yeah. is Tony Stark. Exactly. What that's the what fuck I'm is going Do you see what You're I'm right. saying here? You're right. No Logan's longer. Zonison, There's no man. more Robert Downey Jr. Yep. What was that whistle? Oh. Who's Fast. The sand? Yo, can we Wait, dump the sand? The just tell him to dump the fucking sand. Yo, can we just talk about this, for example? <laughs> no, not, I'm not yelling Paige, at you, but tell him to dump Paige, the fucking sand. Paige, is this, is, is this a good idea or is this problems. a bad idea? Dumping literally tons of sand. 48 metric tons? No. no four, that, sorry, it can't be that. 48 <laughs> cubic yards. This yeah. is a really funny problem now. 48 cubic yards of Man. sand. By the way, also, are you coming to our party on Sunday? No. She can't. I'm going to ask you one more time, and this is your final answer. Are you coming to our fucking luau on Sunday? Okay, no. It's yes. a luau. Fuck. Fucking <laughs> shit. thought you had it that time. Sorry. I have stuff to do. I'm trying to do, like, as much as I can uh, before, the surgery? before surgery. I have surgery on Thursday. So what are you going like, to do on Sunday? What are you going to do on Sunday? Probably fly home. Oh, fuck. So. That's a great answer. <laughs> is it, though? <laughs> well, are you going to see your family? Hey. Uh, no. You're invited. <laughs> Come Maybe, on yeah. over. Your husband's coming. Husband your go. husband's coming. <laughs> How... I just don't know if if anybody else has thought about this. How are we cleaning this up? The sand? Is this going to have a yeah, suggestion? Hired. So here's the answer. Vacuums? Large oh, you succulent? Can give a fake Vacuums? answer. I give the real one. Okay. okay. What? What do you think? How to clean up the sand? Yeah. yeah how do we clean up? I mean, you pretty much hire anybody to do anything. So oh. that's what we did. Okay, you yeah. nailed it. You nailed 100% <laughs> got it exactly yeah. right. We hired somebody to do it. Oh, that's easy. I don't know how else to Sorry. fucking put it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, man, it's not. We I had this dope PowerPoint presentation okay. for you. Let's see. Oh, I might be able to do it on mics. Can you airdrop it to mics? Yeah, bro. I would love a PowerPoint. It's just there like go. like no, like I'm gonna be honest. Normally, it's the number one podcast in the world. Okay, today it still is it the number one? It, it is. is. It is. Yes. But today oh. it's like uh, good job. Thank you. It's yeah. not going that as, as I expected. You know. Hey, we've we've been doing a lot of work lately on the back end, like data side. Do you think yeah. it's yeah. the coffee caused my computer to not work for sure? 100%. Right. <laughs> You have destroyed like the liquid going into your keyboard and accessing it. the motherboard. Probably. Yeah, I think that might have done it. <laughs> there we this go. This is ASMR now. I literally cannot. Oh, something's happening. Your computer was restarted because of a problem. Oh. Yeah, no shit, huh? Wait, you're, wow. that worked? You're up? No, it worked. No, it's it's completely reset, bro. Nintendo. <laughs> Yo, watch this. <laughs> I hate to do this to you, but 50 bucks says you won't throw that computer through the TV right now. No, don't do it. He's right. He's right. Okay. I won't. There's, there's a lot of value on this. Fuck. On this here oh, computer. Here, should I accept this? I don't want, really want it. Please accept. Okay. <laughs> I really want to see this sand, bro. He's going to wait. We're paying him off. Where's, what do I connect to? Is he lying? You're, what do I connect to? Probably something, right? How you been, Paige? Good. Good. What's your, hey, what's your five-year plan? I'm what's curious. The, because like... Um, five year plan. Okay. Like, is you just gonna be fighting forever? Bro. No. Send it again. No. Do you have a five year no. plan? No. Okay, so I'm only twenty five, but I heard you're said, younger bro. than me. Which I is, am. I'm a year younger. Good job. Thanks. Um, no. So uh, I want to just keep fighting for a long time, which people you, don't realize because oh, do. I've been in the UFC for six years. Uh, because I started when I was nineteen, yeah. so people see me as a veteran, but I'm still, you know, young and still getting into my like, you know, peak athleticism. Mm -hmm. It only it goes up from here. Do you have some sort of business angle you'll take afterwards? Because oftentimes I fear that uh, fighters don't don't, don't have that five year plan. Oh yeah, I'm doing really well. Um, oh. I've had some big uh. interviews going on. <laughs> um, no, I definitely don't put all my eggs in one basket, especially because I've had you know going in for three arm surgeries. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do anything. Like, I love sports broadcasting. I would love to have my own cooking show. Is Apple TV too? Oh, there we I go. I won Chopped. Wait, wait, wait. Have really? you seen the cooking show Chopped? You won? I won. Thank Are you me. just doing all the shows? This I like, incredible. I love all the shows. I was going to ask you this. Um, how cool is it? You said you were a professional dancer when you were yep. young. How cool is it that you were able to do Dancing with the Stars? And by oh, the way, probably amazing. be fucking good at it. I was you, really good. You did all uh, dancing your whole I life. I second. 
<laughs> yeah, I did great. Superstar. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, it was awesome. I mean, to be able to go and relive something I've been doing my whole life and, you know, get paid for it was, you know, amazing. Sorry. It's okay. I, for the fifth time. It's all good. I, I, I'm going to blame this one on Mike. I mean, at least because I came from uh, Brennan Jobs. At least he, Fuck, he's good. At least he fed me. He is so he good. Did feed you. We have a chef. Yeah, we have a chef. We'll feed Don't you eat your tacos, everything. though. Okay. So sorry, Chef Katie. <laughs> They're just not good. The gluten free tortillas, man. Fuck. Um, <laughs> you did Brennan Shops? Yeah. He's how, our top was watched that? podcast. Is he? No, from, listen. Top hey, listen. Top listen. Sorry, okay, top listen. Good. 100% completion. Shout out to everybody that watched Brennan Shop to 100%. Okay, what do we do to top that? Cause... No, you already did. Okay, cool. You already did. We got to say, we got to do something. Oh, you want to do it now, cool. Dylan? Well, it looks well, like we're not fucking and here's ready. here's another reason. So why don't you turn your laptop around, around and show me some <laughs> dumb ass, no, stupid fucking distract words. Distract me, bro. Ta- like this. Yeah, ta- Dylan showing us tacos are good. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, really, they are. Really, it's, what? It, Brennan's a fighter, so I'm wondering: yes. is it? Is there like what's the vibe on his podcast? Like, it, I mean, of course, we talked a lot fighters. of fight stuff, uh, uh, like a ton of fight stuff. Um, we got to eat crepes. Oh, we're oh my god, <laughs> we can't beat that. Can't beat a crepe. He feeds he feeds his guests crepes. Yeah. This is a fucking disaster. <laughs> I don't know how else to put this. Wait, what, and you know what? I, what are we I, waiting? What are we slightly do, what blame are the doing? host, but I mostly blame the fucking producer. Oh, yeah. Because you know what? I, Fuck. That's what. I'm, at this point... Paige goes, what are we doing? I don't fucking I know. literally cannot. I, <laughs> go fuck yourself. I have uh, no fucking idea. Here we go. Here we go. No, I got this. No, no, no. no, no, no don't stop, move. Stop, don't stop, move. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, okay, stop okay, breathing. Okay, okay, in, okay. In an night, in an night, in an night, in an night. This kid's gotta be kidding me. He's gotta be kidding me. I got, got this now. He's got nothing left in the goddamn tank. It's your show now. My show now. All right, guys. So what do you contribute your success to? Oh, Jesus. Good no? Question. Okay. My dad taught me how to work Loaded hard. Loaded question. No, I said in an ideal. Oh, oh, give me that. I said in an ideal world, uh-huh. everything's perfect. But as you know very well, Paige, this not is not perfect. an ideal world. No. Oh. <laughs> you did the wrong side of it. In an ideal world, Did they dump the perfect. sand? Yes, yeah. I video. It, it's already, it's already. Yeah, hey, it's come back. Sand. There goes all our fun. All right, enough talking about coming and dumping loads, Danny, okay? <laughs> Just keep it to yourself next time. <laughs> this section was called, Can You Beat That Person Just bring up? it up on the fucking screen, <laughs> and it'll zoom in on the fucking screen. All right, wait. What's fucking good, Logan? <laughs> I'm sure it's just three. I'm sure it's just three or four celebrities, and then a fucking pick on Mike at the end because it's the same fucking line every time. It's a shit producer. Fuck. What's the hold up? I'm gonna leave all this in here. Like, I, like again, like normal people would cut it, but this oh, is great. This is all I'm gonna say. Yeah, That's cool. I think just, so. Just use the screen. No, don't look. Oh, you have a dog. Not just a dog. That's a baby bear. <gasps> Ginger, hi, baby. She's gonna run. She's out. Oh baby my bear. god. Her first instinct is get out immediately. You have a dog. Yeah, we have, we have a couple because one of them got eaten by a coyote. Yeah. Don't say that. Yeah, we're say not again. just saying it. One of them got eaten by a coyote. No. That one up there. Oh my gosh. He used to not be a pillow. That's going to make me cry. <laughs> That's so awful. Yeah, it's horrible. <gasps> I go coyote hunting. Okay, good. He's 0 for 1. Mm. If you're a coyote and you're watching this, you're probably safe because the kid can't hit shit. <laughs> <laughs> can you beat that person up yeah, on, a, on a little screen? Cool. On a tiny little screen. Okay. Andre, how's the Zoom here? So I'm just answering these. Are you? I mean, because you're a boxer now, do you get to answer? Them no, too? this is this is all you. You're okay, the cool. guest. All right. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, hi, Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Oh, oh, baby. All right, here we go. Can you beat that person up? Yeah. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. <laughs> Kevin Hart uh, yeah, he's tiny, right? Oh, oh geez. Geez. <laughs> yes. God. He's being trained he, by you friends. Know, you know he's boxing now. Is he? Yeah. They yeah, lost, didn't he? Hi. Hey, Ginger, this page. Yeah, he did just recently box someone, right? He did. He lost. That's who you should box. Kevin Hart. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> My Look bad. Out. Yo, Kevin, I love you. But also, like, what, are you crazy? My bad. <laughs> yeah. All right, here okay, we go. <laughs> Ronda Ooh. Rousey. Okay, that's really... I think she's trying to be a mom now. So you don't beat up moms? <laughs> uh, <coughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one, too. Uh, is this the Macy girl? Yeah. 
Boop. Next. Damn, she's oh. next to all of them. John Wick. John, That's a good one. John Wick. John Wick. Okay, so actually, John Wick, he's like 50. Yeah, he's old. He's old now, yeah. but in his, he's still, he does all of his own stunts, which no, is John amazing. Wick, no, we're not talking no, about Keanu Reeves. We're talking about John Wick. John Wick. He's the oh, act. not Keanu. Okay, not the actor, this Correct. guy. That guy. Um, he breaks people's necks with books. Like, just throwing that out there. Yeah, but I break my arm on people's heads. Hard. Let's hard. So. Hard body. Wow. Yeah. We I'm didn't really think of that. You think you could beat John Wick? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's a bit bold. Yeah. Well, okay, but he uses, like, weapons. He, oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Not always. Not, uh, not, unless he gets them from his enemies. Okay. No, nah, I'm lying. I don't know. Yeah, that, no, that's right. Here we go. Give me a weapon. Hey, Big Mike. He was right. Shocker. <laughs> what a shocker, <laughs> dude. I'm uh, fucking real. Who's dude. that? Hey, Big Mike. Hey. The co-host. We can do that sometime. I don't oh! want to. I don't want to because Let's do it. I'll tell you why. Oh. I'll tell you why I say no. Because Fuck. I'll tell you why I say no is why? because like that like fake fighting situation that usually could potentially turn into like a hooking up situation can't happen with us because you got a fucking giant husband who will beat the okay. shit out of me. Then fight him. I don't want to fight him either. Oh. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want to fucking eat toast eat at late at night. And my one dream in life. Uh, he wants a lazy river. Yeah. It's the only goal I want in my entire Do life. What? A, he lazy wants a lazy river in my river. backyard. Oh. Do you have one thing that you aspire to to obtain in life? It might like be weird. One, one winning Could thing. be a weird What's thing. What's your lazy river? A blimp. Like... I think I have one. I, gotta... I don't know. Okay, let me hear everyone else's first. Do you have one, Spence? Uh, I would say uh, mine's a, an electric jet. Oh, oh yeah. That's, right. that's jet. really good. An electric jet. Flex responsibly, bitch. Yeah. Well, okay. I got mine. I got mine. No, I know what yours is. Okay. What? You don't have it. You've said it multiple times. Uh, I have? The flying bike. Oh, fuck. That's, that's right. definitely his. He yeah. wants a bike, bike that flies, yeah. dude. That you pedal along and then you just fucking go in a flight, yeah. dude. That's incredible. Okay. I made that's the schematics for it. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's ah. expensive. It's like 160K to make happen. You know what I saw the other day? I saw a YouTuber because I was looking up electric planes. Yeah. And I saw a guy who made his own. He was a YouTuber and he was flying in it. He's and incredible. He's, he's now dead. No, he's no, incredible. He's, a, he's living, but it's like, you got to have balls to fly your <laughs> own aerial device. All right, can we do the audio only, please? Please. Hold on. I want to hear it first. Oh. Oh, yeah. What do I want in life? Yeah. yeah. What's like your thing? Okay. I want to have a house big enough that I can have like 500 dogs. Woo! So 500 oh, dogs. Yeah. 500 right. dogs. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I, think that, dogs. I feel like that's every single girl's dream. Like, do you think if every girl to answer that same question? Dog. Nah, most girls maybe do cats. Girls yeah. like, I think uh, it's a uh, <laughs> I hate cats. <laughs> Really? So oh. much. The dude. only cats that are cool are the ones that are like dogs. Yeah, the, they the all cats, cause not dog cats that are like dogs, just dogs. You know what cats <laughs> yeah. remind me of? They're they're tiny little lions that they just wish they could kill you, but they can't. Uh, they would do anything. <laughs> they're like, they I would do anything. You, have you ever seen a cat that's like, I would fuck you up, but I can't. <laughs> I, can't. I just can't. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, that's that. literally their only goal in life is to either not come. To, they don't respond. They won't come to you and called. <laughs> Their only job is to it. kill you. I almost had that one. So, sorry, Andre. <laughs> Andre doesn't like when I kill flies. He's a vegan. Really? Yeah. Oh. And yeah, we've got this one fly that only emerges during the show. Well, he's posted, he's made a house and his whole family lives back there behind the TV. Behind Kong's pillow. All right, let's do the audio only. It's like this, but it's okay. audio only. Spotify and iTunes, guys, right now. Patreon's Ant, thank you for coming on Impulsive. Hey, thank We're, you. Of course. Where can they find you on social media? Thanks. All the way, I have good. one for this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What? What's your socials? Yeah, what is oh, your socials? Uh, it is at symbol. Okay, makes okay. sense. Page Van Zant. Easy. Oh, easy, 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 dude. Also, personal apology yet again coming from Logan Paul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who would have Who would have guessed? Oh, hi, audience. I am so sorry, Paige. I am so <laughs> sorry. Would you call that a severe and continuous? I will say absolutely. Yeah. Well, this was a shit show. It's because you were so focused on the sand, bro. Yeah. I really was. I'm sweating. And I also think it once again, it was because of the damn sparring, bro. He's always. Do you yeah. get hit in the head a lot? Hey, hey, Are you good? No. Nope. Hey, Paige, Logan wants to get into MMA. Any advice? Bro? Oh, I oh, do. Not saying for audio only. I'm going audio only. Bye. 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 We love you. Logan said, hey, man, you uh, see anything you like? And I was like, <laughs> and I got like giddy like a kid. I was like, dad's yeah. going to buy me some shit. And I was like, yo, this hoodie, I tried it on. I was swagging. Like Logan was like, so yo, good. that it shit well. is fire. Nice. And he goes, he goes, yeah, man, you look great in it. And I'm like, what? And she's like, so are we taking it? And I'm like, I Can looked I at him it? and he goes, you buying it, Mike? And I go, motherfucker. 